So what I've done here, and this is for student use, um, is actually giving you a diagram of what's inside the furnace. You may recall that a furnace is just the, you know, where the air and the fuel mix together and burn and then transfer their heat to the water within the system. So we actually have two sections within this furnace. One is what I'll call the boiler, or perhaps the true boiler, and then the other is the superheater. So let me just explain how all this works, and then we're going to walk around and see some of the equipment. So first, um, we recognize that there's saturated liquid water that comes out of the economizer. And if you look right up here, um, from the economizer, it actually goes into a drum up top that we call the steam drum. We'll go up there shortly. Now, the steam drum actually contains a saturated mixture. Um, there's saturated liquid, which because of its higher density, sits at the bottom of the steam drum. And then there's a saturated vapor, which sits at the top of the steam drum. Now, we're just talking about the liquid portion at this point. So the saturated liquid from the economizer um, is actually directed through a pipe that's actually invisible because it's inside the furnace casing here, um, which is called the downcomer. And that saturated liquid goes all the way down to the bottom uh, to a drum that we call the mud drum. In fact, we can see the end of the mud drum if we just kind of scan over here to the left a little bit. Um, this is the mud drum here, um, big drum, and it actually is what about three feet in diameter and runs the full length of, uh, of the furnace. So within the mud drum, is just saturated liquid. Now, the saturated liquid is directed through tubes that rise up through the inside of the furnace. In fact, they're actually on the inside walls of the furnace. And um, those are called risers, you know, the riser tubes. And that's where the heat transfer takes place. So the saturated liquid starts rising upwards through the risers. Um, and there's literally hundreds, if not thousands, of riser tubes here. Um, as the water moves upwards, the saturated liquid begins to vaporize. Now, it doesn't completely vaporize. In fact, in a typical furnace like this one, um, only about 15% of the liquid is actually going to turn into vapor. In other words, the quality when the risers actually exit into the steam drum is only like 15%. And this is very typical. Um, 85% of that is still saturated liquid water. So the saturated liquid, as it comes out, again, because of its low density, sits in the bottom of the steam drum. It mixes with the saturated liquid from the economizer that we talked about before, and then the process continues, right? So the saturated liquid goes down the downcomer, up through the risers, the liquid portion goes back down through the downcomer and up through the risers, and through this continuous recirculation, um, we end up turning the saturated liquid water into saturated vapor. Now, the saturated vapor is going to come out the top, again, we'll go up there and see it, and then come down through the superheater. Um, the superheater is actually a series of heat exchangers on the back side of the furnace, which we'll also see, and then that superheated steam is going to go on over to the furnace. I'm sorry, <laughs> to the turbine. So you may want to pause your videos and kind of study this a little bit just to get a better feel for how this particular system works. So we recall that the water coming out of the highest pressure feed water heater is still going to be compressed liquid water. Um, we need to turn that into saturated liquid water so that we can put it into the boiler. Now, the compressed liquid water from that feed water heater is in this pipe right here, and it comes into what appears to be just a series of ductwork, but that's actually insulation around the heat exchanger that we call the economizer. So the compressed liquid water comes into the economizer. Um, as a heat supply, the compressed liquid water is actually using exhaust from the furnace. So this is the big furnace here on my right. Uh, way up top there is the crossover ductwork. And then that exhaust gas comes down through the economizer. It transfers heat to the economizer. Um, that turns compressed liquid water into saturated liquid water. And the saturated liquid water then comes out of the economizer. And you can actually see the pipe directly overhead. Um, that's the saturated liquid water that comes up and over and actually ends up um, inside the steam drum, which is part of the boiler. And we'll look at that shortly. So we are now up on top of the furnace. Um, you may recall from previously that the saturated water and saturated vapor are mixed together inside the steam drum. And this is actually a steam drum right here next to me. So the saturated liquid portion is on the bottom because of its greater density. Um, the saturated vapor portion is on the top. Um, let's also keep in mind that not only are we having the saturated mixture coming out of the risers within the furnace, 
or if you will, the boiler, but we also have the saturated liquid coming out of the economizer. So, you know, this is a great view of the economizer. Um, you know, here's the economizer right over here. Um, this is the saturated liquid line that comes out of the economizer and it actually disappears right into the side of the steam drum, but in the bottom half of the steam drum. And now the top of the steam drum is the saturated vapor portion. So this is the main steam line. It's saturated steam that comes out and you can see that it kind of runs the length of the furnace and then drops down right on the outside of the furnace and actually goes into the superheaters. So we're going to go down and look at the superheaters next. So this is the superheater portion now. Um, you can't quite make out the piping just because of the angle, but you can barely see the steam drum up top. Um, you can also remember from just a moment ago, the saturated steam piping that comes out and moves along above the steam drum, and then it comes down into the superheater. Now, the superheater is inside the furnace, so we certainly can't see the superheater tubes, um, but the superheater steam, uh, the saturated steam piping, you can barely see it up here through the catwalk. It comes down, and then the piping goes into the furnace. Um, there's a series of tubes along the inside of the furnace. They move all the way across and then into here. Um, that steam then changes direction. It goes in through the second superheater section. So there's a whole series of superheater tubes again inside the furnace. And we end up with superheated steam that comes out and finds its way over to the turbine. So the superheated steam is going to come out here. Um, this again is our main steam line. Um, as we move along here, um, we can see that the steam line comes up here. And then it's the largest pipe you can see, you know, three fourths of the way up. Um, it goes all the way over. It comes across, again, the large pipe that comes across. And now you can see it disappearing underneath the turbine deck. And ultimately, it's going to appear here going into the turbine. And of course, you really can't see any of it from right here. Um, now, one other thing that I would also like to identify, as long as we're talking about the water system, and that's what we call the blowdown system. If you look at the mud drum, um, and again, we note that the mud drum is down here at the bottom, um, remember that that's where the saturated liquid comes out of the downcomer and then gets distributed into the riser tubes. However, that's also the low point in the system. So whenever you have a low point in the system, that's where all the crud would collect. And yes, we do call it crud. Um, it, it's kind of a muddy mixture. It's um, flakes of metal. It's oxidation. It's minerals that have you know, solidified. All that is just going to collect, and it kind of has a cruddy, muddy appearance. Um, so the mud drum is also there to, well, Look at the name, it's called mud drum. It's there to collect the mud. So periodically that mud has to be blown down, in other words, removed from the system. So there's a couple of big valves here. Um, we would open the valves and keep in mind that that is under pressure. Um, it's part of the boiler, so it's a full boiler pressure. So under full boiler pressure, it's gonna push the mud, which is actually mixed with some water, and it's gonna come out through some piping, and it's gonna come on over here, and ultimately it's gonna find itself into the blowdown tank. Um, keep in mind that that is not clean material. There, there's a lot of heavy metals and stuff in there, so that has to be treated appropriately. So the blowdown is gonna go into this blowdown tank. Um, the water portion, once it hits atmospheric pressure, it, it's just gonna vaporize. So you're always gonna see a continuous plume of steam coming off the top of the mud drum. Um, that's just being noise suppressor up top. I mean, when you reduce the pressure from 2,000 pounds down to atmospheric, that's a significant pressure drop and you're going to hear it. So we always have a noise suppressor on these types of systems. So that's the mud drum. And that's really the last thing I wanted to talk about on the water side. Now what I'd like to do is move ahead and talk about the air fuel exhaust side. So now let's look at the air and exhaust and fuel portion of the system. So first, if we kind of crouch down low, um, we'll see the large beige pipe. That's the landfill gas that's actually coming into the furnace. Um, the landfill gas is going to enter right here in the front. Um, and that's going to, of course, have to be mixed with air. So if we look to the right, um, we'll be able to see the air duct. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Actually, we've talked about that already, I believe. We've got the air duct, we've got the exhaust gas recirculation over there. So the air is gonna come in from right to left. Um, in fact, you can see right where 
the air duct hits the furnace, you can see all those uh, lever arms there. I mean, that's the damper system, right? So that's the controller. The controller is inside the box directly ahead of us, that beige, big beige box. And it's uh, another mechanical controller. It's just gonna move those arms and adjust the damper for proper airflow. So the fuel comes in from the bottom, the air comes in from the right. Um, they mix together right here and they move away from us into the furnace. Um, you can see the burner there in the front. Um, just think of it as, uh, you know, kind of like uh, what you'd see on a barbecue. Uh, you know, you, it's electronic, you, you click it, it creates a spark and it makes sure that the air and fuel are burning properly. So we've got the igniter um, and burner in here. Um, the air fuel mixture now turning into combustion gases is going to move the full length of the furnace away from us. When it gets to the end of the furnace, it's going to move upwards and come back towards us. And then what you'll be able to see is that exhaust gas, um, you know, after giving up the majority of its heat um, in the boiler and then in the superheater, the exhaust gas is going to come up through the ductwork directly above the furnace. So there's really only one possible flow path. You might say, well, why is it that the air fuel mixture just doesn't go straight up and out the exhaust? Well, it's coming in under pressure and it's actually being forced through the burners with pretty high velocity away from us towards the end of the furnace. So that motion is gonna bring it all the way to the end of the furnace. It hits the back wall where the superheater tubes are. That creates a lot of turbulence, which is really good for heat exchange. Um, the exhaust gas continues towards us in the top half of the furnace, and then it's gonna come out the top. So it comes out the top, it then crosses over towards the right, um, and then starts coming down, and that large piece of insulation over there, again, it just looks like a giant duct, that's the economizer. So we've seen the economizer already from the water side, well, now we see it from the combustion gas side. The combustion gases move down, some of those combustion gases are now drawn off for the exhaust gas recirculation. Um, most of the combustion gases are going to go now away from us towards the smokestack. And now let's walk around and take a look at that. So the exhaust gas, gas coming out of the economizer is going to go straight down. And this ductwork at the bottom then is the exhaust gas that's moving towards, um, well, first the air preheater, and then it continues here through um, and up in the smokestack and out into the environment. Um, keep in mind that the smokestack really has two purposes. One is to get the pollutants away from body level where we might breathe them in. Uh, but from an engineering point of view, it's actually there to provide some um, motive force to help pull the gases through the furnace. Um, keep in mind that we have very low density, hot combustion gas coming out of the ductwork into the bottom of the stack, but we just have um, atmospheric air at much lower and therefore high, much lower temperature and higher density um, that's above it. So you have this density difference that creates a certain amount of buoyancy, right? And that um, essentially helps pull the gases through. So in essence, what's providing motion is the force draft fan pushing the air into the furnace, and then the stack essentially creating a pressure differential and drawing the combustion gases out of the furnace. Now, we talked about the air preheater, and we know that the air preheater is right here. Let's go back a little bit and talk more about the air system, the air handling system, and make sure we understand how this works and what some of the components are. So, this is our force draft fan. There's actually two force draft fans. Um, these force draft fans are operated by huge electric motors. Um, the fan is going to draw in air, um, you know, up at the top. Um, you can see the actual air inlet. Um, the air inlet has some screens inside of it. So that's going to screen out, you know, much of the particulate matter in the atmosphere. Um, it's then going to come down and um, there's an air dampener system here. So that's gonna give us some flow control um, on the air side. Um, then we actually have the fan itself um, and each one is essentially identical. So we now have air being forced through the air system. Now it's gonna first move over this way. Um, let's keep in mind, you're not gonna send it directly into the furnace. Um, you're first gonna have to use the exhaust gas to help preheat the air. Uh, keep in mind that the exhaust gas 
as at about five or 600 degrees Fahrenheit at this point. So you don't want to just get rid of that. Let's use the energy to preheat the air. Um, when you preheat the air, then you require that much less fuel um, during the combustion process to achieve the same maximum temperatures. So the air comes across up top. It comes over here and then moves away from me. And then what you can see, well, you can't really see, but underneath this insulation, this is the air preheater. So the air is coming in through the top and then it comes down. Remember the exhaust gas was moving through at the lower elevation. So the air is coming in in one direction, basically from my right to left. The exhaust gas is going from my left to right. Um, there's a heat exchanger in there. Um, heat is exchanged. The exhaust gas carries on its merry way up the stack, but the air, which is now preheated, is gonna come out here and now find its way towards the furnace. Now let's also keep in mind um, that this system has a EGR system, an exhaust gas recirculation system in it. So um, you can kind of see from here um, off the ductwork there below the economizer, that's exhaust gas that's pulled in to the EGR recirculation fan. Um, this then moves exhaust gas through this duct here right in front of us and over and up and therefore we have exhaust gas that's mixed with air. And again, this is to minimize NOx formation. Um, and then that air is directed right on over into the furnace. And we saw that at the beginning here um, as we're looking at the burners and all of that. So that then is the entire integrated furnace boiler. That's what we would call it. Um, I might note lastly that that boiler is sometimes called an O boiler. Um, because of the nature of the steam drum at the top and the mud drum at the bottom, and then the tubes that almost form like an O, um, you know, often that's just called an O boiler.